Hello and welcome to part 9 of Beautiful Chord Progressions with me, Fake Dr. Levin. In this lesson, I'm going to use Jimi Hendrix's great chord progression from his tune, Little Wing, to explain a couple valuable and little uh, chord progression concepts. So, first of all, the chord progression is written out for you in a transcription. It's E minor, and then it goes to G major, then to A minor 7, and then back to E minor again. And then it goes to B minor 7, then B flat minor 7, then A minor 7, and then it goes to G. I'm sorry, then D, and I'm playing here with an open G string in it and an E string for color, and that's the progression. noticed in the introduction that I was using a lot of embellishments and that was to kind of do a little like uh, approximation of how Jimi Hendrix um, treats this chord progression in the intro to the song. He does a lot of different melodic things to tie all the chords together and embellishes the chord progression and makes it into sort of like a call and response guitar solo chord progression uh, extravaganza for today. What I'd like to talk about first is this moment here when he goes from B minor 7 to B flat minor 7 to A minor 7. Within the context of the progression, it happens here. minor 7, which is totally in the key of E minor, and then cut and paste that chord shape and move it down a half step to B flat minor 7, which is totally not in the key of E minor, and then go another half step down to A minor 7, which is very comfortably back in the key of E minor again. So the idea I'd like you to take away from that is that you can create what's called a chromatic passing chord which is a chord that isn't necessarily in the key or doesn't even have to make any sense in music theory but is just copied and pasted down or up chromatically to get you from one chord to another. So let's make another example. What if we wanted to go from this B here, this B minor, to this G major? So you could use chromatic passing chords to get all the way down there. That totally sounds fine. And even though these chords, some of them aren't in the key that we're in, they just create that little bit of motion. And you'll notice that throughout this series, we're talking a lot about how tension and release creates motion. And motion in a chord progression is a very powerful thing. So what if we were moving up from G to B minor 7? You could do it with all major chords. So the chromatic passing chord is the first concept I'd like to share from the little wing progression, and you should definitely try moving between chord progressions with this very simple method. I'm sorry, moving between chords with this very simple method. So now, the next part of this progression is here he is on the A minor 7, then he goes to G, and then he goes to F, and then C, and D. And what I'd like to talk about is this F. So we're in the key of E minor. E minor contains the notes E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, and D. Now that's really the same key as G major, 
and they're called relative keys. E minor is the relative minor of G major because they share the same notes, but the difference is that in E minor, the focal point is this E minor chord being home base. E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, E minor. Now I'm going to play those same notes, but starting on G, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. That creates this sense that G is the center. So the only difference between E minor and its relative major, G major, is, is that the in the E minor key, E minor feels like the home or the center of tones or tonal center. Whereas in G major, the relative major, G major, the chord, sounds like home or the center of tones or the tonal center. So G is the tonal center in G major. E is the whole tonal center in E minor, but the notes are the same for those two keys. Um, so you'll notice that in the key there's this F sharp. All of the notes are natural, but then Fs are sharp. But we're playing an F chord here. And I'll do it in context so you can hear where that happens. I'll do the fast version. So the F is really bold and really beautiful right there. And so what's the deal with it? It's not in the key of E minor, so what is it? Well, in that case, since E to F sharp is one to two in the key of E minor, the F major chord is our flat two major chord. And you might remember we used flat two major seven in the previous lesson when we went flat six, flat two major seven to one major seven. Here we see our flat two major chord used again. Although it's not a major seven, it's just a major triad. We have our flat two major here, and it's just a brilliant sound. And even though it doesn't resolve down to the one the way it did in the previous lesson, it sounds really great in context. And then it moves to C major here, which is now comfortably back in the key of E minor because there's no con conflicting notes there and then it goes to D and then back to E minor to start the progression over again. So you can throw in that flat 2 major chord in a major key to create a big atmospheric change like we did in the previous lesson. You can also throw it into a minor key to create a big atmospheric change and it sounds delightful. So. The, the last piece of the puzzle that I'd like to share with you is how Jimi Hendrix goes from that out of key chord, the flat two major, back to the key of E minor. So he goes from this F to this C, and then to D, and then the chord progression starts over again. And it sounds really smooth. The reason it sounds so smooth is because when he goes to that F, he takes the F sharp from the key of E minor and says, go away for a minute, and he replaces it with an F. And so now there's no F sharp in the key in your ears just for a second, because we've taken a step out of the key, which means that we have all natural notes. We have E, F, G, A, B, C, D. We have no sharps, no flats, just natural notes, which puts us in the key of C major. So this chord, F right here, you could say it's derived from the key of C major. And so then the next chord he goes to is a C major chord. And the C major chord fits in E minor because the notes in it are C, E, G, and none of those conflict with the notes that are in E minor. Those are all notes that are in E minor, but those notes are also in C major. So what he's done here is he's created a pivot chord that takes, uh, it takes the properties of the key from which you come and the key to which you are going. So we step out into the key of C major for a second with this F major chord. Then we play this C major chord, which is our bridge between the key of C major that we got from this chord here to 
our key of E minor, which is our ultimate destination for this progression, since that's the chord that it starts on. So he creates a really smooth transition by finding a shared chord between the keys. So this is another way that you can change keys, is if you have key number one and key number two, and key number one and key number two both share some chords. Maybe there's some chords that are only in one or only in another, but maybe there are a few chords that both of them have. And you pick one of those chords and you play in the first progression, first key, then you throw in one of those shared chords, and then you move to the second key. And you've got this kind of safe connective chord that works in both keys. It's sort of like if you're trying to bring up a big change of subject, maybe you'd want to, in a conversation, maybe you'd want to transition kind of gracefully to the new subject instead of just cutting things off and being like, now we're in a new subject. And so this is like the polite sort of transitional chord between this flat two major chord and going back to E minor world. So to play the whole progression again, we have E minor, then G, then A minor 7, or A minor, and then E minor, then B minor 7, chromatic half step down, then to A minor 7, then G, the flat 2 major 7, which is F, then the pivot chord of C, then D takes us back. Well, she's walking through the clouds. Da 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 da. And then the song goes on. So I hope that this has provided you with three interesting tools to go ahead and try out in your own songs. Um, if you don't know exactly where to start, I would start just by learning this song and getting a feel for it and modifying the chord progression slightly in different ways using some of the tools from earlier in this series to change up this progression and see what kinds of results you get. And, you know, experiment, listen, and have a good time with it, and it'll start to seep into your ears.